This presentation provides a brief introduction to the literature and culture of Anglo-Saxon England and supplements the materials in your textbook and on the content page. To begin, please pause as you see fit to review, read further about, Google, or otherwise research any point or detail on this or any other presentation that you look at over the course of, of the term. As you can see, the Anglo-Saxons, or the Old English, fit within the so-called early medieval period of English and European history. As such, they are distinguished from the cultures and literature of later periods, including the so-called High and Late Medieval Periods. The High Medieval Period is well represented by a series of books listed here, which categorize the available knowledge of the natural world, including plants, animals, and minerals. The late medieval period is best embodied by the works of Geoffrey Chaucer, who died in the earliest days of the 15th century. The Anglo-Saxons were also known as the Old English and were descended from Germanic tribes who migrated across from northern Europe in the 4th and 5th centuries and displaced the native Britons who were descended from the Celts of northern Europe and who had migrated earlier. The age of the Anglo-Saxons stretched from about the 6th century and didn't end abruptly in 1066 but was changed dramatically in the wake of the Norman conquest that year. With the outcome of the decisive Battle of Hastings, the Saxon influence became subordinate to that of the Norman French, and English culture and literature was changed dramatically as a result of those developments. The epic poem Beowulf stands as the best representative of Anglo-Saxon culture, and stands between Germanic pagan and early Christian worlds. In their time, the Anglo-Saxons also produced noteworthy figures of historical and intellectual influence, including the Venerable Bede, Alcuin, and Elfric. Here are some images to associate with Anglo-Saxon culture. The archaeological efforts at Sutton Hoo, near modern-day Norwich in southeastern England, were begun in 1939 and stretched out into the decades after World War II. These labors unearthed a ship burial tableau and show a culture with sophisticated metalworking skills and aesthetic tastes. That perception was reinforced in more recent years with the discovery of the Staffordshire Gold Hoard in central England in 2009. Again, you can see the sophisticated designs in these artifacts, and it is worthwhile to look at the additional resources you're linked to on the content page in order to learn more. Besides the epic poem Beowulf, other noteworthy literary works from the Anglo-Saxon age include the poems The Wanderer, The Seafarer, and The Dream of the Rood. Your textbook provides some indication of what the Old English language looked like, and the YouTube clips show what it sounds like. Please review these poems as you are able. And then look over these slides. They summarize the most evident aspects of the culture as reflected in the poems, including the warrior ethos, the terror of isolation, the power of fate, and the melding of Christian and Germanic pagan cultural traditions. Finally, here's a noteworthy passage from the poem Beowulf, which contrasts the comforts of community with the forbidding landscapes and fearful creatures that exist beyond it. If you don't remember anything else about this poem, or Anglo-Saxon poetry generally, the most important feature is its alliterative character. It is the repetition of consonant sounds within each line rather than a prefigured rhyme that makes this poem. With the resources available to you in your text and on the content page, 
especially the recordings of the Old English language. You should now be in a position to learn the most important beginning aspects of the Anglo-Saxon world. I hope you enjoy this experience as much as I have over the years, and thanks for listening.